Skyrim is neat. I enjoy a good Skyrim every now and again, but sometimes your Skyrim needs a little less Skyrim and a little more something else. That makes total sense, don't worry about it. Can you beat Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC without taking any damage? So here's the funny thing about this challenge. Usually, when I start a playthrough for a Fallout or Skyrim video, I can get it beaten in about two days, start it one afternoon, finish it the next. Well, for Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC, I started it quite a while ago, in November. I don't think I even have that footage anymore. Then, I tried again earlier this year, and made just as little progress as I did the first time. You know that weird sick smell you get in your nose the day before you catch a cold? That's in the air for everyone right now, so what better time to go back and embrace the pain? I began my journey for the third and final time with a character I made many croissant moons ago. The challenge for that particular character was practice arrows only. I don't remember exactly why I stopped that one. I blame alcohol and the establishment. I chose that stealth archer because a stealth archer is the only real way to play Elder Scroll V Adventures of the Stealth Archer, and because past experiences taught me that I need as high of an archery skill as possible. Also, I used the console command to set my max health to 1 so that any damage of any kind kills me. My first stop in this quest to induce great suffering in my soul was Dawnstar. Why Dawnstar? There's a secret chest God accidentally left under the ground when he was making this city, and it's filled to the brim with all sorts of goodies. Blades for slicing, arrows for piercing, hammers for smashing, soul gems for all sorts of satanic sexual activities. You can't not have a good time, unless you can't reach the chest in the first place because a mod removed it. As the anger piled up inside me, I entered a Dawnstar house, looking for someone to kill. I split his chest cavity in half. Nobody outside cared about his death, including me, so I quit the game, removed the unofficial Skyrim patch, started the game again, and could finally access the chest. Just like that hollowed out rock behind Megaton in Fallout 3, I would expect me to hit up this chest in every Skyrim playthrough I do from here on out. I didn't take everything from the chest. I didn't want to be greedy. Probably the best thing to come out of this was learning of an absurdly easy way to acquire two wooden swords. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. With my pockets full of someone else's stuff, I traveled to Whiterun to sell what I didn't need and immediately noticed that something was off. Couldn't quite put my finger on what it was though. After selling more than a few things to that genie up on the Dragon Rock, I did something I've had nightmares about. Lydia joined the party. A lot of people on the internet will tell you that you need to be at least level 15 before starting the Dragonborn DLC. I think I'm level 8. I thought of the Nuka World DLC where nothing bad happened and knew, with the help of a donkey, that I'd get through this just barely. From the Windhelm stables, I politely persuaded the boat guy to take to the high seas with my donkey and die, and at long last, we arrived in Solstheim. It's a beautiful place. Lots of new and exciting creatures to be f destroyed by. My task was to track down information about whoever sent the cultists to kill me. I began that search by attacking the sentient remains of my dead dog. Lydia was destroyed almost immediately. It was a joy to watch. My demise wasn't quite as wonderful. A few attempts later, I resorted to luring the smoke people back to Ravenrock, where the guards would hopefully be killed so I could give their armor to Lydia. Captain Veleth asked me to search Adia's farm for clues. I channeled my inner Steve, spent maybe 7 seconds looking for clues in the wrong place, and gave up, sealing the fate of the Mitten Bureau of Investigation forever. Lost, inept, and looking for something to do, I went back to Ravenrock to stock up on supplies. I got my hands on a couple hundred arrows, a few enchanted bows, and asked around about Mirak. Sitting Lady pointed me towards the Temple of Mirak, Based on its name, it's probably a dead end, but I had a waypoint and was eager to mindlessly follow it. It was around this point in past lives that I gave up on this DLC. Even the basic wild creatures and enemy NPCs you'll find on the island are tough to kill. Deeper into the landmass, I found a group of humans who gave me the option to leave without any bloodshed. I put a few arrows in one of them, a few others turned into werewolves, and I let them do what needed to be done. All things considered, it didn't take long for me to meet Freya above the Temple of Mirak. 
she explained what was happening all over the island. Stones are being used to corrupt the minds of the non-believers. Together, Freya, Lydia, and I ventured into the Temple of Mirak. She suggested I loot the rooms in search of usable supplies. I found a skeleton who died like a true gamer, but not a whole lot else. Cultists, Draugr, and a bunch of traps all littered the temple. Amazingly, I managed to accidentally set off an arrow trap and not die. Once the Draugr Deathlord woke up in an area that wasn't even the final section of the dungeon, it dawned on me what exactly I'd gotten myself into. Luckily, Freya is adequately equipped to handle the cultists. Lydia, not so much. Now the one good thing about the cultists is that they can attack from a distance, which is always ideal for no damage runs. Their fireballs can be dodged if you put some effort into it. Lydia didn't, and she paid the ultimate price. I dropped her body 20 feet down onto concrete, just as she would have wanted, and pressed deeper into the temple. The Draugr in the next few sections of the temple were mostly restless Draugr and whites, not the basic Draugr that can be taken out with one stealthily placed arrow. A few arrows with help from sneak attack bonuses could take them out. Or, you can just use the environment to your advantage and trick them into activating your trap card. The pendulums could have been a pain in the ass, but I'd gotten far enough into Skyrim's main quest with this character to get the Whirlwind Sprint Shout, which helped me get through the blades without dying too many times. The Adept Cultist gave me some trouble, mostly due to the spark spell they used being nearly impossible to dodge, and it has a larger range than you'd think. It's like the Commando perk from Modern Warfare 2. If you're within range and they can see you, you're dead. The Gatekeeper woke up from his nap after I absorbed a word of power. Had it not been for Freya, I would have had to resort to leading it to traps and letting it get cut in half by saws. But she kept him distracted by letting it use her body as a punching bag, allowing me to pepper it with arrows from a safe distance, kill it, and then face a drug or death overlord, because of course that's what's waiting for me. Surprisingly, it wasn't that bad to deal with. In the deepest and darkest part of the temple, all my fantasies came true when tentacles emerged from a book and dragged me into another dimension. Mirak had his little monologue, the floating mammoths screamed at me a lot, and I returned to Ravenrock with Freya to speak to her father about what to do next. He revealed the next step. Go to Searing's Watch, find a limited edition dictionary, and learn the word that Mirak learned back in the day, and speak that word to the Windstone. The sky was a beautiful combination of greens and blues and purple. It was almost as beautiful as the green tree man who murdered me in cold blood. A wilderness puppy approached me suspiciously, then rolled down the mountain without any help from me, and I arrived at the magic wall that put the word's energy into my body against my will. There was a dragon and Draugr and all sorts of nonsense all over the place. I had to sneakily take out the one Draugr that saw me, learn the word, then get borderline stuck in a crevice while running from a dragon, fall down a waterfall accidentally on purpose, and flee through the frozen landscape until I was far enough away from the winged beast that I could travel to the windstone and let my vocal cords rip it a new asshole. Well, that was the idea, anyway. Turns out you still need a dragon soul to unlock the shout, and I didn't have any souls. I was also not far enough in the main game story that I could easily fight the dragon at Kynes Grove with Delfino, so I had to kill me a dragon. It's always a problem when you can't take damage. The small silver lining was that I knew where one was, and I had plenty of arrows to attack it with. Back to Searing's watch to fight the dragon I just spent 5 minutes running from. I got a few arrows in it over the course of several minutes, which was when something amazing happened. It flew over to the other side of the mountain and got physically abused by something. What that something was, I can't say, but it didn't matter. I finished off the dragon, got its soul, learned the word, blew up the stone with my mouth, and a lurker emerged from the stone's corpse. Lurkers are not easy to kill, especially at level 8 or 9 or whatever level I am now but it can't fly, and as such, is still subject to Skyrim's laughable AI. I could sit on a nice looking rock and fill it with arrows from behind cover while it just stood in place, occasionally shooting a mucus bomb at me. With it dead, Storm Craig Rider gave the order to cleanse the remaining four stones around Solstheim. Instead, I went to the Mushroom Village from the Restoration Spells Only video to meet a special nerd, before that though, I stocked up on more arrows from a Raven Rock merchant, and spent many lives trying to kill one of the veteran guards sitting with his back to me. He, you know what I'm about to say, fell before me 
and I got my paws on an elven bow. It's not the best bow in the game, not even close, but it was a solid step up from what I had. Inside, the world's biggest mushroom, I spoke to Nolith. He learned me where a new black book is, invited himself to retrieve it with me, and to teach him about manners, I threw a bunch of his stuff down the wind hole. I tripped on a basket and died. I helped about as much as someone like me could help at Nichardic, but Nolith did most of the heavy lifting to remove the Reavers from the area without hurting them or their feelings. Inside was Dwemer As I've said many times in other videos, I detest these parts of Skyrim. The book had been sealed under glass that had been infused with the power of flex tape. There was only one way to retrieve it. We used the special cubes to boil all the water away. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Nolith handled the majority of the enemies inside, and all you're doing is finding cubes in different areas with very light puzzles, if you could even call them that. Do what the wizard says, don't embarrass yourself in front of him, and you'll have all the cubes you need in no time. Once the blocks have been obtained, a big metal man with the mind of a child will wake up and ignore the almost naked guy with a special helmet shooting arrows at him. Then all you have to do is place the cubes in their positions, the black book will be revealed, tentacles will suck you into the nether, and Hermaeus Mora will introduce himself. He'd be a fascinating guy if he wasn't such a slow talker. I don't know much about this realm, but not being able to take damage means that falling into the drink kills you instantly, which feels fitting for this place. Depress the spaghetti, and you'll be within spitting distance of a lurker, which must be killed in order to proceed. You can just die and go back to the room where you read the book, but I couldn't remember what happened if you did that, so I just brute forced my way through this. At first, it seemed quite the Herculean task to kill that lurker. After many failures, I unlocked the perk that slows down time as you aim, which helped me land multiple critical shots on the beast, killing it. Then came the noodle monsters, the Seekers, as they're called in-game. These first two I faced were a task and a half to deal with. I tried spells and staffs, and all sorts of different tactics on them, before I realized it would just take time and arrows to down them. Their projectile attacks are slow enough that they can be dodged fairly easily. Facing two or three at a time can make that more difficult, but it's still not something you'll have much trouble with if you've ever played a video game before. Then, I had to activate the orange tentacles again, and I wondered if I'd wasted time fighting when I could have just activated the thing right after I killed the lurker. And that was exactly what I did throughout the rest of this apocrypha section. Sometimes I snuck around the seekers, other times I ran past them with my arms stretched out as far behind my back as they could possibly be. After reading chapter 5 of the teleportation book, I spoke to Hermaeus again, this time at great length, about his knowledge in Mirak and the new Canaanites in Zion Canyon and all sorts of stuff. The short version is, the only way he'd grant me access to his knowledge of the final word of the bend will shout is to end the ancient battle of stubbornness between him and the Skull tribe. With my giant nose out of that book, I bid Nolith a farewell and tried to return to Raven Rock. I say tried because the dragon attacked as it was scripted to because it has a name. After Nelith killed the thing, Mirak absorbed its soul and barely escaped my arrow. Before reporting my findings to the tribe guy, I returned to Skyrim to head to Dawnstar to get myself a crossbow. They're better than any bow I had, and I kind of assumed that I'd need one to defeat Mirak down the line. Then I hit up a couple different merchants scattered throughout Skyrim for a couple more batches of arrows and returned to Solstheim to inform Storn of my discoveries. Remember that quest I said I was glad to not have to complete? I have to do it now. Nothing screams Bethesda game more than the illusion of choice. I started with the Earthstone because it was closest to any place I'd discovered so far. I counted on the people in armor, keeping the lurker distracted with their bodies while I filled it with arrows from a distance. They did, for about half its health. Then I got a quick save, right as it killed me. Skyrim has the same slight loading delay as Fallout 4. What this means is that the game is active, let's say, while it fades in from black. You load right back where you saved, but it's almost like you don't have control of your character for a small window of time which is more than enough for something to kill you if you saved while fleeing. For round two, I stayed farther away from the lurker as I attacked it, got it down for its final nap, and moved on to the Waterstone. Pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong here. I ignored the cultist that was already at the stone, blew it up, which spawned the lurker, and a dragon showed up. 
My only save in the midst of battle was when I was hanging out on the side of a mountain, out in the open with nowhere to run. Even fleeing to the point of being partially through reality itself wasn't enough to save me. What I eventually did can only be described as kinda smart. I went back in time, killed the cultist right off the button, spawned the lurker, made sure the dragon was in the area, then ran the F profanity away while they duked it out. I wanted to see what was happening during that fight while I was tucked away in a corner, so I used the TFC3 command to give me a live, third person view of what happened. My body was still sitting vulnerably in a hidden spot, so I wasn't really cheating. The lurker launched this poor sap into f orbit and the battle raged on. The dragon won, I didn't have to do anything to the body, so I fast traveled away as quickly as I could and waddled towards the beast stone. Yoshi was there and I kinda fanboyed a little bit. Amazingly, or perhaps because it's supposed to happen this way, another dragon showed up. This time I again sat in a corner and used the TFC3 command to watch the fight. It was, uh, quite the battle. The dragon lost, unfortunately. I picked off the scraps which were still very much alive, got the dragon's soul, and was at the sunstone. There was no dragon at the stone, so I had to kill the lurker myself. Honestly, not difficult or all that time consuming either. With the stones no longer controlling the minds of the people, Storn read the book and offered himself up to Hermaeus. It was far more brutal than I thought it would be. But I was a little let down that the tentacles didn't go inside the old man's ears and eye sockets. My disappointment was rewarded though, as Hermaeus gave me knowledge of the final bend will word, and I could finally take on Mirak. Of course, you know that was sarcasm. Because nothing can be simple, I needed one more dragon soul to unlock the final part of the shout. There was no convenient way to make a dragon spawn. My only choice was to wander the wasteland in search of a dragon. My one idea was to head to Ustingrav. I always seemed to get attacked by a dragon on my way to or from there. And by Joe Swanson it worked like a charm, even if it did take 15 minutes. I also got rather lucky with the dragon attacking something else that did big damage to it. Based on the few frames of the thing I recorded, it looked kinda like a mug crab to me, but there's no way that's right. With the shout now fully powered, I read the black book and entered Apocrypha to track down and defeat Mirak. It was a number of areas with books and weird platforms and the noodle guys and all that stuff. I saved after I entered each new area, saving as you're sprinting past all the enemies is asking to get f by the game. Put all four books in the correct place, read the special chapter 6 book, learn the worthless dragon aspect shout, bend will the weird looking dragon, and take to the skies for the first time in Skyrim since the last time in Skyrim. I really had no idea what I was doing here. I kinda just pressed a bunch of different buttons until the dragon went to the big tower in the center of Goo Lagoon. There he was, Mirak. I was finally face to face with the original Dragonborn. I readied my invisible crossbow and the fight began. Seconds after it started, archery leveled up to 50, allowing me to quickly snag two more perks to aid me in this battle. Now the crossbow did more damage than I would have thought, but this was by no means easy. And while there were other red dots on my compass at times, I don't recall ever being killed by anything other than Mirak or by falling into the vats of Nickelodeon slime. Mirak is different from Alduin as a final boss in that he doesn't have wings, so he can't fly, but that doesn't make him any easier to hit. In his time spent in this wretched dimension, he mastered the art of moving from side to side to dodge projectiles. He also has to be beaten a total of four times. The first three times, he'll use the Become Ethel Shout and absorb a dragon soul to restore his health. His fireballs are shockingly fast. He does a bigger fire move that's slower but has a wider area of effect, and is a general nuisance to beat. On the positive side, there are multiple piles of dead books that can be used as cover. Also, fun fact, I used an enchanted bow that did 30 points of magic damage, but didn't notice that I was using practice arrows with it. I did that for quite a while actually, before switching them out for orcish arrows that, believe it or not, were better. I think the worst part about this fight was how he always shimmied around. Like it makes sense in the context of the game, he kills dragons like they're nothing. Obviously he is good at fighting and it makes the entire ordeal more interesting. I just don't like it. Moments before I could land the final blow, Hermaeus Mora's tentacle pierced the chest of Mirak, sucked his life out of him, and dropped his skeleton onto the ground as a parting gift for me. I obtained all the components to become Mirak, 
beat Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC without taking any damage, and went back to Solstheim to bask in the praise of the townspeople. They dared to oppose me, so, with the game already beaten, I became Mirak, enabled God Mode to become the man I was always meant to be, and laid waste to everyone in Raven Rock. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. Day wonderful I have. Squad Mitten of Paul is named Mai.